What's up guys, welcome to the GC journey. This is now episode three in the GC8 engine bay harness series. Just to get you up to speed, episode one, we listed all the components and we completed the harness layout and planning. Episode two, we populated the connector, did the service loops and the main trunk of the harness. And now in episode three, the plan is to complete branching out the entire harness, sheathing everything. And if we're lucky enough to reach that stage, then we'll also do all the labeling. So that's the plan for this episode. Let's get started. Okay, so we'll now do the rest of the harness will branch out the rest of the entire harness. For this job, I have a few tools here on the table to help me. So first of all, there's this uh, multimeter. As you can see, one of the ports splits into a number of different pins to make the job easier. I also have the harness layout with all the lengths and the connector layout, which is also open on the laptop right behind me. So those are the tools I will be using. I would say the biggest challenge here would be to make each transition with a small as possible profile. And so that's where the main focus is going to be. So we'll start with opening all the wires from this point onwards. And uh, we'll start figuring out the groups that we need to make and where everything needs to split and transition and all that fun stuff. Fun for you, I'm not sure it's gonna be fun for me. So I'm gonna start by revealing the core of the harness, branching out the core, understanding where the shielded wires need to go and which other wires I will need to add to them, looking at the layout. So for example, if I have the cam sensor here, so I can see the AC wires go with the cam sensor together for 28 centimeters till they split. And here, for example, you can see that we have the crank, alternator, coolant temp, oil pressure, and oil temperature all going together from the main branch point till where they all split. So I'll start with something easy. One of these is the crank sensor. One of these is the cam sensor. So what I will do, I'll do a continuity test with the multimeter using the connector layout documentation. And so if, for example, I will look at uh, Home Plus, I can see it's pin number nine. I'll take pin that suits the connector pin type. I need number nine, which is this one. Let's just make sure it works. Yes, it does. So if everything's pinned correctly, one of these should now beep. Okay. So this should be the cam sensor wire. We'll double check by doing a continuity test with another one of these wires, which is pin number 10. So pin number 10 also beeps. So this is the wire for the cam sensor. And we'll now search for the four wires that go to the AC, wrap them around this, and then we've finished one section of the harness. We have a few blueies here. Which one of them is the same length? I bet it's this one. So we have two blue AC wires and we have uh, two yellow AC wires which again should be the same length as these wires. I, I would guess it's these two yellow wires, but uh, we are of course going to uh, do a continuity test with each one and confirm that these two are indeed the two yellow wires going to the AC. We have a, we have a close competition here. There are three wires. So we're almost the same length. Oh, there's another one I missed. How long are you? Oh, four wires. Okay, gonna be close. Can be any one of them. Let's find out. Found one of them. This guy. So I will take the other two wires so they don't confuse us. Okay. So basically what I wanna do now is make sure that all these five wires all exit as close as possible to each other so that the other wires that we take out the harness won't have to cross over them. With most of the wires, it's gonna be okay, but it's gonna be a bit of a challenge with this uh, blue wire here, which was on the outer layer, and uh, the cam sensor was in the core, so not that core, but uh, the core of the harness. So they're a bit far from each other. It's gonna be challenging to make, make this look good. We will do our best. 
All right, so we have four wires twisting around these shielded wires for the cam sensor. Obviously, I did it way too long. It will probably, they'll probably split somewhere around here, I believe, or here. I just did it so it would be easier to add the filler wires, definitely gonna be needing some filler wires. I think this is as smooth as it's gonna get. I mean the transition, transition. Don't know if there's anything more I can do here. Right, so uh, I'll now add a few filler wires. This will not do. So now the transition should be smoother and uh, I will add the filler wires to this layer. Will four wires do? No, I don't think they will. I think we need the fifth one. So I'll just add one more. Yay. All right, I've marked where the, the cam sensor and the AC wires split. So the filler wires need to reach all the way here. So what I will do is I will pass the marked place by a little bit and I will grab it with zip tie. So, filler wires are now held in place and we will now fill the entire layer. So as demonstrated, this is one section complete. Around about here is where the AC and the cam sensor will split and uh, it's pretty much a rinse and repeat for the rest. So instead of boring you to death, I will go ahead and do that. And if there's anything interesting to report along the way, I'll share the information with you. Okay, so a little progress update. We already have the flex fuel, the engine ground. This is the wiring for the boost solenoid. This is for the vehicle speed sensor. We have the knock and these two sections. This is the first one we did with the cam and AC. And this section has the crank sensor, alternator, coolant temperature, oil pressure and oil temperature. I'll now branch out the right-hand side and left-hand side ignition and injector wires. It's gonna be a real pain because you wanna make sure that you're branching out the ignition power wires with the ignition signal wires and the injector power wires with the injector signal wires. Now this is a part that requires a lot of concentration, so wish me luck. Okay, some progress has been made. I'm gonna stop here for today. I'm kind of struggling with the section of the uh, injectors and, inje and uh, ignition coils. I wanna still in enjoy the process and this is kind of pissing me off, so I'll take a break for today and I will carry on tomorrow. Okay, it is a new day, new energy, better mood. I have my coffee here right next to me. I'm gonna pick up where I left off last time, which was this injectors and ignition coil section. Kicked my ass last time, but this time we're gonna win. So it's basically these two, and then a few other things that uh, branch out the main branching point. So I will complete the branching and then we will move on to sheathing. So after a number of failed attempts to get the injectors and ignition coils trunk up to standard, I asked Yutan to step in and show me how he would go about doing it. So he did one side and then I did the other. I really want to set a high standard for this harness and there are some things I lack the experience required in order to reach the level I'm aiming for. Now this guy has been doing this for a living for many years and in my opinion, anyone interested in getting a quote for a top level harness should definitely shoot him a message up on Instagram. Okay, so done branching and twisting the entire harness. What I will do now is a continuity test to make sure that each wire is reaching where it needs to. Once we confirm that everything is reaching where it's supposed to, then it's onto the sheathing. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then it is over to your thumb for a slow motion sheathing montage.
your time is done preparing all the labels for the harness. The harness is like 92% complete. We're almost done. We only need to put the labels on and crimp all the connectors. Then we'll have a completely terminated harness. Now, once the harness is complete, before we can go and install it, we need to do the cabin side of the harness. Once the cabin side harness is done, we will be able to install the engine bay harness. Now, besides the cabin side and the engine bay harness, the fuse box in the engine bay, it's gonna be deleted. I wanna clear that space. And so later, when the car goes into body and paint, we'll be able to weld off, you know, block all the, all the unused uh, holes in the engine bay and make everything look nice and smooth once it's all painted and smoothed out. And uh, it's gonna look really good. We're gonna have a nice, clear engine bay. The second thing I would like to do once the harness is complete and the fuse box has been deleted is the front harness, like for the headlights, horns, and radiator fans. So there's a lot more of exciting stuff to come, especially if you like wiring, which if you're liking this series, give us a thumbs up and uh, maybe help uh, the algorithm offer this content to more people who might enjoy it. Also, I don't wanna ruin any surprises, but for the fuse box delete, we have something very exciting coming up for that but no spoilers i'll let you wait and see what we have planned so that is all for this episode thank you very much for watching and until next time see you in the next one